Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name is Bobby Waldron and welcome to this all brand new step-by-step -step video build. Now we're going to be going off and doing an iconic jet. It is the F4G Phantom 2. This is the Wild Weasel version and it is by Ming Models and it's in 148 scale. Actually, a really cool kit that I've been actually really excited and really wanting to do. Um, I'm going to be doing this video in intermediate style, so we're going to assume that you've built a model or two, right? So we're going to be kind of touching on those um, intermediate side of things, going into some advanced stuff, and kind of skipping all the basic things like cutting um, pieces off sprues and gluing things down and all that kind of basic, basic stuff, right? Um, I do recommend that you go off to the Genesis Models website and check out, say, some of the spraying tutorials just to kind of get you up to, to, to speed. You'll find them in the tutorial section. Um, now, this build is, from what I can tell, really sort of amazing um, what Ming models have done. Really good company. Um, the fit of some of their kits are absolutely amazing. The details all there, absolutely lovely. Um, and just the way they go about sort of things going together and coming together um, really is quite impressive. So I am very excited about this one. Um, now we're probably going to um, do a few things differently in the cop here. Um, I'm hoping to maybe do a bit of different weathering and stuff on this so um what i'll do now is um if you just check out the inbox review i did this um, a couple of months back but um if you don't want to watch it just skip over it and we'll get down to some building hello there welcome to this models my name is bob Waldron, and welcome to this inbox review we're going to be taking a look at this f4g phantom 2 by ming models in 148 scale now this is a brand spanking new tool um new tool in 2022 so nice and new i am quite excited about this one because i've been so impressed by ming models um hornet just here it's been going together absolutely beautifully so you know liking our f4 phantoms you know this should go together beautifully as well so let's open this up and check it out i mean the box art looks really really nice by the way um what we've got on the sides i mean it does show us on the sides a few little things there kind of you know showing us that oh, it does look like we get ladders and um all those weapons and all that good good stuff it does show the ak um, interactive paints as well so uh, let's start getting out some plastic let's start off with the first one let's get a good look at our surface detail which this one should show it off quite nicely we've got the bottom part of our wing section of fuselage right uh, feeling very smooth right um, if we get you in a little bit closer right we can see a lovely recess rivets recess panel lines right looking at a nice consistency on this piece um, and looking very crisp loving those recess panel lines there you can just see how lovely they all look we've even in our air brakes just here got what feels to be yes raised rivets as well so nice detail inside of there right um nothing major on the inside right we've got our main part of the fuselage section as well just just here with a little bit inside so um with this kit it's kind of following the um academy kit in the sense that um let's just say like um has a gary we, you know we've just done a step by step on the has a gary build right it's two halves coming together this kind of like brings it all together as kind of like one one piece uh problem is with that i mean the um the academy one i mean you saw sort of like mold lines sort of going down here which i'm just trying to inspect it and um, i'm not seeing any sort of mold lines because it's kind of like when they do it like this you end up with um it's like I think it's like three or four kind of molds coming together to make something like this and um, you can sort of see those mold lines but I'm not seeing anything on this one it just looks nice and consistent and crisp throughout so there's no kind of going off and doing a bit of sanding to get rid of maybe a little bit of mold lines we're looking actually really really good it kind of makes it a little bit easier so our spying 
doesn't have like a join line going on down there that that I, I am quite impressed with that really cool detail um, but yeah the surface detail on this is looking just like um, the other piece we've just seen nice and consistent um, we do have some cool detail around the cockpit area as you can see just just there uh, inside there's probably not much going on on the inside which there isn't which is fine uh, moving along i won't get everything out of the bags but we've got our air intakes here which i'm kind of just seeing yes the the surface detail is looking nice and consistent um throughout as well and just knowing from just doing the hazagawa one i mean the detail is definitely looking better than the hazagawa one all right and then we've got our bits uh, going on there so moving along we have another sprue just here top wing section got some nice weapons with this kit as well um, again surface detail as you can see very crisp very consistent throughout um, our wing tips just here maybe seeing a little little bit of flash maybe just on the ends just there uh, nothing major going on there flaps looking good there we go flipping this all over not seeing any nasty ejector pin marks i mean our slats i mean i am seeing some ejector pin marks in there but they should get covered up really um, we've got a little bit of detail some raised sort of rivets for our wheel wells just there you can just see that um, internal detail there um, we've got some weapons here i forget which ones these are is this the hm 88 harm missiles um, either way you know they are again recessed panel lines and rivets same sort of crisp level detail throughout um, the adapter pylons going on there with recess rivets and all that stuff and there's two of them in there um, moving along with some more got some duplicate pieces um just here so we have our ejector seats which again i mean the, the level of detail hopefully as you could see is really really top notch with this kit uh looks like we have air intakes or exhaust going on here something along those lines We'll check the instructions but yeah again so so crisp our wheels they're in two halves the hub caps again looking so so crisp um, exhausts all right nice fine detail let's flip this over uh, i do have a dejector pin mark there but i'm sure that gets covered up inside the exhaust actually looking pretty nice and smart and well detail detailed in there um yeah we've got our uh, guessing this is more of the internal exhaust area i am seeing a little a big sort of eject pin mark there but i'm kind of thinking looking at that little groove that's just in there that may be an air intake fan or something will go in there and you won't see that eject pin mark i'm not too worried about that so looking good there as well uh, moving it through we do have loads of um one of these the mavericks in here there's six all together so we've got a nice couple of mavericks going on um, and the detail does look the same and good as, as the other weapons that we just just saw um, next bag all right we've got some cockpit detail in this one um, we've got our uh, what is it the um, horizontal stabilizers uh, just here again that detail is absolutely gorgeous nice and crystal clear flip this over you see it the same on the other side we do have um looks to be like our arrestor hook on here which has got loads of bags of detail on that as as well uh, moving along we have a uh, cockpit tub right no detail on the cockpit tub but it's one of those where everything builds on top which I flip no it's this side um, which you could probably oh where's it gone now I did see it earlier maybe it's not on this sprue but on another sprue but uh, we'll get to that in a second now look the um, air brakes they are looking so well detailed as well um, even our wheel well doors right lovely detail as you can see all the way along our actual um, 
the wheel wells themselves because they're built up like a box it's like everything's going to have loads of lovely lovely detail um, a little bit more sort of going on there where else what else have we got here's um, a bit of okay i mean we do have this is our wheel wells i do believe our rear ones no, i suppose see i mean that's why i like because i mean this is the front part of the wheel well as you can see because it's like a box you know you've got detail on there and then it's all kind of flat so you can just bring it together and there's detail everywhere but when they do it as one piece like this you know you don't tend to get as much nicer detail and there's a bit of what well, looks to be a bit of flash on there to maybe take care of as well oh here we have a bit of our landing gear as well no ejected pin marks in nasty places flash is looking good as well on them um, and then what we've got just there a bit more sort of cockpit detail uh, do have a two ejector pin marks there but i'm sure the seats ejector seats will cover them up um, fingers crossed one to maybe look out for there a little bit um, again you know we've got um, a couple of just weapons going on in here which um, i won't get everything out of the bag because um, we've got the general gist of it um, next sprue what do we have on this one ah, we've got some cockpit detail on this one um, again some more lovely weapons if you don't use them all they're going to be good to actually go off and keep because they look really really nice uh, cockpit detail here we have like some um, of our side panels and stuff again looking good nice lovely recesses buttons and dials going on there um, as you can see loads of them right and this is what's going to build up that plain cockpit tub um, we have oh we've got our instrument display panel all right just just there looking good as well um, our pylons looking so so detailed the detail the surface detail is just lovely lovely on this and um, we have our ladder just here which is nice that they've added that as well uh, just flipping this over just to check we've got no sort of problems with it uh, just flip it over again we've got a bit of what details that I'm not sure where that is might be a bit of wheel well detail but looking nice and crisp in there um, again I won't get all the sprues out but we do have like um, fuel tanks um, clear parts for like our Mavericks um, the one thing I do want to look at is this is our air intakes which you can just see inside the plastic there uh, we do have ejector pin marks which can potentially be a bit of a shame um, it is quite a lot to look down and through there so I mean but you, you know a bit of filling and sanding of those ejector pin marks that are in there uh, and you should be all good um, last we have canopy right so let's just get this canopy out oh that's already looking so nice and shiny uh, again you never really pick these up quite well on camera always best just to throw it up to the light and they are absolutely perfectly crystal clear now there is a mold line um, going down the middle so you know scraping that back polishing it um, up and, and you should be all, all good um, moving along oh now I, I will say this kit is going to cost you around about the 75 pound mark not exactly a cheap kit but it's looking well well worth it um, and if um, you're a Genesis model subscriber member you can have up to 30 percent off in store so um, kind of makes it a lot more cheaper that way um, so let's have a look now we've got a few little goodies in here right like we have um, some canopy masks always a nice nice touch adds um, the value to the kit then we have a um, pit top tube which is very very nice that they've added a pit top tube to this kit um, i really do love um, adding them to mine um, now i know they cost a couple of quid but you know it's nice to add it in there and i do believe it's the vertical stabilizers a bit of metal just going on there i'm not sure why it needs that but maybe it needs a bit of strength but it's kind of like 
quite a big thick piece of um, photo etch going on with that. Then we have our decals or decals, depending on where you are in the world. Right, um, these are pretty good decals actually. They're kind of like your, your typical kind of Tamiya kind of decals. I do believe in you kind of want to use the Mr. Mark Stofter and Setter. But we do have decals for our um, cockpit area, as you can just see just there. We do have these big um, lung pieces, which you know it, it's nice that they've added it but normally with this kind of stuff it is kind of good to maybe try uh, and spray it down um, but they have added them if you want to um, go that way then we have all our little markings just here hopefully as you can see there um, we've got um, the, the little writing does look like it's nice and readable hopefully as you can see looking quite clear in register we've got some nice kind of little markings just there the colors look good um you know i shouldn't uh, shouldn't uh, shouldn't doesn't look like we're gonna have any problems with the markings thing as cross so last up we are going to take a look at our instructions and how this is going to be going together so let's bring you in a little bit closer right the instructions are nice good quality glossy in color um, set of instructions and when we kind of see our first page here it does quite nicely show quite clearly like where the decals are going to be going where the pieces are going to be going um, it does give us color call outs which is rather nice that they do that um, especially um, when it's like a 75 pound kit I mean that's the one thing I'm doing the the Apache boy tack them at the moment and their instructions, you know, it, it's like they've rushed through them, um, which, which is not kind of good because, like, we haven't got any colour call-outs or anything like that in there. So nice to see uh, Ming doing that. But, yeah, cockpit looking quite cool, quite straightforward. Now, our um, horizontal stabilisers, really kind of cool here because it actually sort of connects both of them up. And it does look like they can be moved. So when you move one, the other side's going to move as well. So that's a nice little touch. Um, we have some um, landing gear bays just here, looking quite straightforward, right? And they go on our bottom part of our fuselage wing section quite easily. Air intakes, exhausts, wings, seems quite straightforward. Now, I know with like the Hazagawa kit, these air intakes um, look similarly the same how they fit, but the Hazagawa ones, they're a little bit iffy, a um, bit of fit issues, just because of the shape of the aircraft. I mean, this is something I would say, you know, be careful, test fit and whatnot, but if it goes together the way that um, Hornet's going together by Ming as well, I mean, it just drops together so, so beautifully. Um, and once you've got to this stage, we're putting that top part of the fuselage section on, and we've pretty much got the main sort of shape going on. We can have our flaps in the um, retracted or extended position, so we we can add whatever kind of pose we want to this. Um, Exhaust going in, our uh, vertical fin going in, seems kind of straightforward. Um, does look like, you know, a lot of um, slats, flaps and all this kind of stuff we can have in those different positions. Air brakes, looks like we can have that up or down. You know, a lot, a lot of cool stuff um, that we can do with this. Then we have our landing gear, looks pretty, it does look like they've, um, because the, you know, sometimes you know, they cram everything in. It doesn't feel like these instructions, they've crammed everything into like one page. It's like they've spread them out a bit and it just makes it look so easy to sort of follow. We then have um, our pylons with all those nice sort of countermeasures on there. Um, all our weapons, pylons, uh, fuel tanks, um, lots and lots of cool stuff that goes on here. I mean, Yes, um, I mean, there's a nice amount of weapons on here, which is cool, which is definitely better than the Hazagawa kit. Um, would be nice if there's a few more, but, you know, I mean, there's, there's enough here to get you going. Um, if you wanted to do any more different types, um, you know, get some um, aftermarket parts. Then it finishes off by the looks of it with our uh, ejector seats, the um, ladders, canopy open or closed by the looks of it. Um, then we have the pit up tube 
which does look like you've got a plastic version or you can go for the metal version um, different ways of going about it which is you know again rob rob cool they put a metal one in there i do like the metal ones um, and then we move along and then we've got i do believe about three different sets of markings right as you can see we've got our first there then we've got our second one there the kind of like gray um camo scheme going on there and then we have this kind of like free color camo scheme which is kind of cool to kind of go down that route with the with the um shark's teeth going on there then we have all our color call outs and um, all our markings and decals for all our weapons and pylons then it also shows you where our masks go which is again quite cool that they're um, including the ones for the wheel masks as well um, and there we go I've got to say I mean I know it's 75 pounds which ain't bad for like what is a brand new tool a lot of plastic a lot of lovely little extras you know metal pit top tubes and um, all your canopy masks and stuff the uh, decals look great surface detail looks fantastic um, again I'm going I'm building the, the, the Hornet right now and it's so beautifully, it's so fun, it just goes together so, so lovely and if it's anything, if this Phantom is anything like that Hornet going together, this is going to be an absolute joy to build and put together um, and it, 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 you could probably even say it's probably the best F4 Phantom that you could go out there and buy and build. You know, if it goes together anything like the Hornet, which I'm pretty sure it probably will. And I really want to build this. I do really want to build this. So I, I, I will eventually get around to building it. So yeah, definitely a big thumbs up here at Genesis Models. Um, apart from that, as always, until next time, my name is Bob Waldron. This is Genesis Models. And I hope you've enjoyed. So that was the inbox review there. Now let's have a look what we have here. I've already kind of made an, a nice start, as you can see. I have um built a few things together i have i am going to be probably using mainly the mr hobby range um, of the aquarius hobby colors here using h317 nice fs number on there that matches uh, the cockpit interior right um but what i want to do is i would like to kind of um, do sort of like a modulation highlighting just to add a little bit of depth to this sort of flat base gray color uh, that we have here so i'm just um i've just kind of you kind of when it comes to these kind of things just find a gray that's just that you know kind of a nice bit lighter now you could do this in like um a lot of stages you could kind of get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter but just keep it quick and simple i'm just going to use the one color just here which is h315 which as you can see is quite a nice lighter version of our gray just here right but we'll have plenty of control now with these paints now this one seems like a bit of an old one so we're probably gonna have to mix this up i can sort of see that that looks there you go you can sort of see it does kind of gunk up at the bottom sometimes right it's so normally you can just get away with you know just these kind of nice stirring rods just here but if you really wanted to mix something up i mean you know those electronic ones that whiz and, zzz and all that kind of stuff but I think we'll be all right with just this for now. Right, with that all mixed up now, um, one thing I will say when it comes to what type of thinners to use for the, the Mr. Hobby range, um, I know the homebrew finish is really a cool one, a nice cheap one, the one that you make for yourself. There's a video of that on the Genesis Models tutorial section. Um, but really, I like to stick with the Mr. Hobby uh, colour thinners on this one. I just find that these paints work better that way. Now, I'm going to be using, actually, uh, who is this? This is um, Hardron Sternbeck's really sort of nice new infinity airbrush that they have here it looks absolutely gorgeous and beautiful uh, my psi is probably going to be around about the 17 psi mark right um, always going to start off with thinners in our color cup right actually we we, we want a an okay amount because what we want here we don't want to go off and do a 50 50 mix your usual um kind of just getting coverage down what we're going to do here is like a bit of a highlight so probably actually um maybe 80 percent thinners to paint maybe 70 
uh, percent finish to paint. So I'm going to use actual paintbrush loads just to get this mixed up, right? Because I don't want it to be too strong, right? By having your um, airbrush or your mixture all sort of we were saying nice and transparent it gives you the control not to put too much coverage down so you allow the color underneath to come through more right so we don't end up kind of having sharp sharp um different colors going on here we want this to look like um you know a highlight right not a, a second color All right so that should hopefully be okay now we're just going to get out um some masking tape here and just do some nice simple bits just here now i'm just going to put this on the back of my hand just so it's not too um tacky i don't want to um pull up any of our paint and i'm just now going to mask these edges off nice and easy um you know it can be quite quick all right again another one now with this one I'm actually going to have the sticky end go just on on this side, right? And you only need to just kind of quickly, lightly put them in place. Maybe just some a little bit sharp, just to press that corner in just there. And then what we should have is a nice little bit there where we can actually um, spray a sort of a sharp edge to this, right? So coming back with, uh, let's get out a kitchen paper towel. I just want to, you just want to make sure that we're not too, too much paint, right? Before we start spraying on, so maybe just a little bit on our, yeah, that looks nice and light, nice and feathered. Hopefully, you know, you can see it's not having too much coverage straight away. And then what we want to do um, in airbrushing, like biting point, always a nice crucial one just here. That is where we um, press down the trigger and just slowly pull back the trigger until we get that little spot come out, as you can see there. And that there is your biting point. And from there, you can hold that biting point and make nice lines and that's what we want to do here so i'm just gonna probably actually my air pressure is maybe a little bit too high maybe i'm coming down to about 15 psi now uh, i just want to sort of get this sharp edge in the corner just here right. now i'm going to go across this way and that's hopefully maybe enough it's a bit hard to tell so I'm just gonna maybe quickly lightly remove that bit of masking tape and you might be able to see how it's sort of highlighted that a little bit right but do you know what I think we could go a little bit more now this is that's the cool thing about having your um, paint thin down to like about 78% finish to paint it makes it very thin nice and transparent so that there you know if I went in there with like say 50 50 I might have gone too much too quick and ruined it straight away whereas now I could come in and be like okay maybe a second pass or even a third or even a fourth pass doesn't matter as long as you can like do a couple of passes uh, and you sort of get there, it just gives you that control, right? So, I'm gonna come in again. Ooh. I may have just done a little bit of spidering, so what I'm gonna just do there is just dry that off, all right? That's my little mistake. So I suppose while we're here on camera, I'll show you how to sort of sort it out. And sadly, the way to sort that out is to sort of re-sort of spray. I don't know if you can sort of see it, but I kind of did a bit of uh, like a spidering effect, right? And it's pulled up. Basically, I've got too close with the airbrush, pulled back too much, put too much paint down. So sadly, I'm gonna have to um, re uh, spray that. And that's how you sort of get over it and sort of redo it. That's 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 my mistake as, as it goes you know here we are on camera so I'm just going to now actually do the opposite side just to show you what I was trying to achieve 
So after my little corrections there, hopefully you can see how it creates this kind of modulation, highlighting type effect to it. Also cool, I mean, if you can go off and you've got the time and the patience to even take little boxes like this and we can sort of try and come in and also sort of spray these as well. Right, but we don't want to sort of spray the whole box. So I'm just trying to carefully get my biting point. I just want to highlight one edge of it sort of thing or a corner hopefully you can see just like so so fingers crossed I remove this and see how cool you get that nice little um, highlight going on just there so if you've got the time to do loads and loads of those little ones that is rather rather cool now let's um just have a quick one on the, the, the airbrush. You know, you probably, because you're getting in close um, and the paint's thin and stuff and you're, you're holding your biting point a lot, always good to periodically, you know, just give your needle, right, just the needle there, just a nice little wipe just there, because that's probably going to build up over time a little bit. Now, I do have, um, let's just put this back on. I don't want to damage my needle just there. Um, now what we've got here, we have um, our instrument display panel. It'd be cool to do the same thing just here as well. I've um, just kind of um, masked up that area there, but what you could also do, if you have, if you liked, was to, to maybe even come in with maybe a bit of plastic card or a bit of paper, and maybe you could just maybe hold that down like so and again get in that biting point you can um, do some nice sort of quick highlights as you can see just there we could probably switch sides right and do the same there just to kind of speed up the whole masking side of things yeah well, this kind of technique does look cool. It gives it a little bit more life um, when it comes to kind of doing the spraying and stuff. But it, it can be a little bit tedious with all the, the, the masking and stuff. It's normally kind of used in armor where it's kind of like a little bit bigger. The cockpit may be a little bit tricky, but it can be well worth it in the end. Now, uh, what we're going to do next, as you may have noticed, I haven't painted these black. Um, something i've never done before right is go off and actually use the decals right i mean uh, a lot of the times i've never done it but so many times the companies will go off and give you the decals for everything um and this kit being so good and ming being a good um manufacturer i'm kind of like Do you know what for the first time i'm going to actually go off and use all this. It kind of makes things a little bit easier if it pays off, because I've literally just had to spray that one color, um, not have to paint black on or anything like that, whack these decals on. I just want to see what they're like and we'll go through the process because um, when it comes to deckling, a lot of the times it's nice smooth surfaces, but we've got buttons and all sorts for these decals to conform to. So I'm uh, probably going to do some advanced deckling now, but uh, before I do that, uh, I'm just going to finish the modulation off and I'm going to seal it in with a, the Mr. Color um, UV cut gloss. Oh, this is the flat one, but they've got the gloss version of this. Um, seal that in, give it time to dry. Um, also, it's all nice and smooth, ready for deckling. Oh, sorry, one thing I did forget to, to mention is actually, if you wanted to go that little bit further, I do like it. Um, coming in with the same color, 315, right? If you come in with a paintbrush, right, uh, and virtually sort of go kind of neat, right? Right, so we're getting a proper sharp bit of paint. What we can do is actually you know, on the, the corners, the tips, right? If we use the side of the brush, yeah, we can put some real sharp highlights onto those corners, right? And because it's the same color, hopefully it won't be too overpowering, but if it's not enough, you could probably go as far as like coming in with some white, right? Uh, maybe we could uh, bring in our instrument display panel just here. I mean, 
maybe this corner here we'll try this one right, we can just come in and get nice and sharp right, hopefully you can just see and that just comes in real sharp right, and gives us that kind of nice nice highlight um, you do that all round it should look rather rather cool and it is quite an easy task to do so yeah sorry I forgot to, to mention that one but there you go so sadly that is it for episode one thank you for watching episode two will be up on the genesis models website at genesismodels.co.uk please go over there and support the channel please support um, the site uh, to keep these builds come and uh, come in along so if you want to learn how to be a professional modeler and build this fan term to a professional level step by step um, please go check out the website and help us out by subscribing um, but as always until next time my name is Bobby Waldron this is Genesis Models and I hope you've enjoyed